while tinkering tonight, I will be keeping my throat lubricated with Monarchy English Brown Ale from Little Brown Jug Brewing in Winnipeg. No weird ingredients in this one. Uh, they describe it as having malt flavors of toffee, chocolate, and dark fruit. So tonight I am going to be just playing with one of the oldest chips that we regularly tinker with still today. And that chip would be the venerable 555 timer chip. Any hobbyist who's uh, been playing with electronics for any length of time has probably at least heard of this thing. Those of us who have been around for many decades have no doubt played with it multiple times. And given that, you'd think I would remember uh, how to use it and how it works. But unfortunately, I made a stupid mistake in a video a few weeks ago. Somebody called me on it. Mia culpa. I don't remember the fine points. So tonight I am going to just tinker with it and let's treat this as a refresher course. Not ex exhaustive by any means, but let's play with the thing. And probably the first place to start would be just to look at the official data sheet. So there is what's going on inside the chip. Uh, we don't need to worry ourselves too much about that, though if you are wanting to get that deep, um, Evil Mad Scientist has an excellent kit to build one of these things from discrete components and a lot of theory about what goes on on their website. And I will link to that and a whole bunch of other things down below. However, here is the block diagram, which simplifies it a whole bunch for us. Uh, pin one is ground, pin eight is power. That's pretty straightforward. Coming off the power, going to ground, we have three equal value resistors in a row creating a voltage divider uh, at one third and two thirds VCC. The, those two points go into a couple of different comparators. Uh, one comparator is the threshold input. The other one is the trigger input. And those two comparators feed into a flip-flop. So uh, when the trigger voltage is met, basically when you are exceeding or crossing the one third VCC, then it tosses the flip-flop one direction. And when you cross two thirds VCC, the other comparator flips the flip-flop the other direction. And then there's an output driver and out. Also coming from the output of the flip-flop is the drive to this transistor, which is the discharge pin. So that goes low when the output of the flip-flop goes high. That uh, is usually used for discharging the timing capacitor. And the other thing that's going on is the reset pin in here, which can also be used to control the flip-flop. Pin five, which doesn't get used in all applications, uh, is a control voltage input. So you can actually uh, send it a control voltage, which will uh, set the voltage, the uh, comparison voltage on this comparator, so overriding the voltage coming from the resistor divider. Scrolling down in the data sheet, we find the two most commonly used uh, modes of this uh, chip. Obviously, there's a lot of other ways of doing it, but these are the two most commonly ones. Monostable mode, which is also called a one-shot. So this circuit works by you triggering the input low on the trigger input here, just with a pulse, as it shows in this little diagram down here. That causes the discharge to momentarily... Uh, ground the capacitor, so discharging it through that discharge transistor. As soon as you release your ground on the trigger here, this capacitor starts charging through this resistor. And when that threshold gets up to two thirds VCC, remember that voltage divider, um, then it flips and flips the output. Fairly straightforward. And then it just stays in that state until you hit the trigger pin again. So here is that basic one shot, AKA a monostable circuit. Um, and just ignore this stuff over here for a minute. Uh, we have the timing resistor up here. We have the timing capacitor down here. And this is just a bypass capacitor to make sure that it doesn't, the uh, control voltage isn't floating around and getting weird crap in it. That's something that it calls for just more of a good practice than anything. You don't really need it, but help stabilize things if there's some electrical noise in the air. Anyway, um, pin three is the output. Uh, this resistor is just current limiting the LED. Don't worry about that too much. Pin two is the trigger input. I've got it pulled high here right now. And when I pull the input low, 
we get the LED coming on and now the timing delay is happening and it timed out which is exactly what it's supposed to do and then every time you pull it low again it restarts the timing cycle so this might be a little bit hard to see on a digital multimeter but I'm monitoring the voltage across that timing capacitor so when I trigger this it should start rising from zero or essentially zero up to that two-thirds VCC and then sharply snap off again as the discharge uh, transistor happens. There we go, we can see it coming up. Yeah, it's changing ranges and stuff, but it went up to about three and a bit volts and VCC on this circuit is five volts at the moment. So that's about what you would expect it to do. Unfortunately, it's hard to show, but especially when this thing changes ranges, but there we go. 3.3 volts, which is pretty close to two thirds VCC. So that guy you could use to trigger basically anything. Um, you can have a relay kick in for X number of seconds. Um, obviously just adjusting either that resistor or that capacitor or both is going to change how many seconds. And there is of course some math in the data sheet to show how to do that. So that is the most basic, most straightforward version, but that's not the one that most of us hobbyists use most of the time. And this is the other common circuit, probably the more common circuit, actually the A stable, which is essentially an oscillator. So in operation, the capacitor is charged through these two resistors. And once pin six, the threshold gets up above two thirds VCC. Remember that voltage divider earlier, then it triggers everything to start happening. It uh, changes state of the output, pin 3, and it also causes the discharge pin, pin 7, to uh, change state and go low, at which point the capacitor is discharging through this resistor. Once it gets down below uh, one third VCC, uh, that's pin 2, uh, the trigger input changes the flip-flop state inside again, it shuts off this discharge transistor and it shuts off the output and the capacitor starts charging again through the two resistors. So the, because there are two different resistors here and they're added together in charging and only one of them is involved in discharging, then you can set the duty cycle of the output square wave by adjusting these two resistors. Now you can't ever get to exactly 50%, but you can get pretty close by changing the ratios of them. So there is some math that you can do to figure out the charge time, discharge time, the period, the frequency, all the rest of that from the capacitors and resistors. They also give you a convenient little chart here so you can ballpark it and get fairly close. So here is that A-stable multivibrator aka standard oscillator which is the one that we tend to use most often in hobby stuff there is the two timing resistors up there um, this is the discharge resistor and this is the one that is used in series with it during the the charging here's the timing capacitor and again there's the bypass capacitor down there uh, led and its resistor here so without having done the math we can obviously see that this is not running at a 50 percent duty cycle um, and that is because, as mentioned already, when we were looking at the data sheet, it's charging through 20K of uh, resistance in this case, and it's only discharging through 10. So the discharge is going to be twice as fast as the charge, which is going to give us a one third, two thirds. And as you can see on the frequency counter, 67.3%, which is well within the tolerance of my resistors. Well, we can get closer to 50-50 by adjusting our values here. In this one, I have the charge resistor set to 1K, the discharge to 100K, and I've also, because um, that's no longer 20K charging, it's changed the frequency of it, so I've reduced the capacitance to 4.7 microfarads instead of uh, 47 like I had in the first one. And if I can connect my frequency counter here quickly, I can connect it out there. Sure. Now we have almost a 50%, but not exactly. And again, if I was to tinker those 
further, I could get closer to 50%, but I'm not going to get exactly 50% just based on that asymmetry between the charge and discharge. So how do we get it to exactly 50%? So here's one of the most common ways that we do this. We use a couple of diodes and a potentiometer to get close enough to our, uh, our resistance values. You can put two different resistors in here. So one diode has the charging current, this one here, and the other one has the discharge current through this path. So you end up adjusting these two resistors or the two sides of this pot essentially to make up for the fact that you've got this extra 1k in the charging path up there. So you could put, you know, um, 4k and 6k in here as your two resistors. In this case, I mean, you could use any values. You just have to do the math on them. But, um, uh, yeah, so that is the basic way of doing it. And it's pretty slick. So here is that circuit put on a breadboard. Again, we have our capacitor down here as usual, but the difference is up here. We have those two diodes, one facing each direction. You could use any diode. You could use a silicone diode. These happen to be Schottky diodes. You could probably use germanium diodes. There's so little current in them. Just as long as they're the same diode, that's probably going to make a bigger difference. And then there is the uh, single charging resistor. In this case, I happen to be using a slide potentiometer. You can use any potentiometer you have, as long as you know the value of it and do the calculations or use an online calculator. So right now, I've got it sitting at about 49%, but when I adjust the potentiometer, I can go all the way down to essentially 9%. Can it go lower? No, okay. And up at the other end, we can go to 97.5, 98%, something like that, or anywhere in between that you want to set it. And you can see that the pulse speed, and you can see on the counter what's going on here. So you can go to really quick little pulses, strobe like pulses almost, or it just gently flickers off and it's on most of the time. And then if you wanted this one to also be variable frequency, you could adjust this resistor here. Uh, right now it's a fairly low value, but again, you could adjust that. And in combination with adjusting what this is, you could get variable frequency and variable pulse width within whatever range that capacitor allows. Again, go back to the math on the, uh, on the data sheet or Maybe not for this version, but definitely for the other two versions of, of the A-Stable, you could use an online calculator. Such as this one on DigiKey's website, and yes, I will link it below. This calculator, it does all the math for you. The math is sitting right there. You can do it yourself if you want to. That's absolutely fine. But for this one, you just plug in values you want to use, and it gives you the on time and off time, and you can do the math for that. This is the first example for the ACE table that I showed. So it has equal value resistors. So you've got basically uh, two thirds on, one third off. And if you change any of the parameters, it updates in real time. And then the same thing for the mono stable as well. And it also has this nice diagram showing the connections and everything pretty much straight out of the data sheet. And for anybody who wants to mess with the 555, I would be remiss if I did not mention Forrest Mims' excellent book that you used to be able to get at Radio Shack back when Radio Shack existed. These are available on archive.org, and again, I'll put a link to them below. But through it, he explains the theory of operation and gives a bunch of different circuits um, that use mostly variants on the three, the, uh, circuits that we already saw, um, or combinations of them. So there again is the block diagram, the basic mono stable and a stable. And then he's just got all of these variant circuits on it. He's also showing the five, five, six, which is 
just two 555s in one package. The pin numbers are different. That's the only thing that's different about it. It's just two 555s instead of having one. And then he has various different uh, audio generators, pulse generators, stuff like that. I built this toy organ circuit oh, several years ago on the channel. That's a fun little one. Basically, you're just substituting a different capacitor in uh, with each different uh, switch press to get a different frequency. Very cool. And this one, Step Tone Generator, is what the synthesizer people call an Atari Punk console. It generates all kinds of uh, interesting bleep bloop kind of noises. It's fun to play with. I don't know. Should I put one of those together someday? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of things in here. And like I said, I'm going to put a link to this document into the comments as well. Well, that was a fun little way to spend a bit of time in the evening. And of course, always useful to refresh your memory on something that you haven't, uh, haven't touched for a long time, but is always a fun little chip to play with. The good old 555. Oops goes this way. <laughs> Remember I mentioned the giant version from Evil Mad Scientist? Yeah, that's this one. And all I did was pull this chip out and drop this one in. And, you know, add the bigger LEDs to, because it's a bigger chip, you know, gotta use bigger LEDs. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Hope, uh, hope somebody, uh, found it interesting or useful. Um, hopefully the resources that I've got linked down below are useful to you for your reference. As I said, I forgot a, b a lot about how this thing works. I just took it for granted. So it was always good to, uh, to refresh myself. Thanks for watching. As always, questions and comments down below. I'll talk to you later.